Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this bass guitar lesson, I'm going to focus on the song Stand By Me by Benny King. Uh, an, um, an incredible double bass performance throughout the song. It's essentially a loop, if you think about it, wherein the verse, the chorus and the entire song structure is driven around that tum. Tum, tererum, tum. It's pretty much all that you're going to learn. Now, I will teach you how to play that, but the goal behind the lesson is not only to learn Stand By Me, which you will, so get your bass guitars out or bass instruments out. You can do this on any bass instrument, including the piano if you wish. So, as you learn it, we are going to look at different positions of the bass guitar. I'm going to cover the open positions. I'm going to cover different positions up the fret, up, up the frets to play some of the higher frets comfortably in a more intervallic way. And we'll also learn how to count this song. In fact, that's what we are going to do right at the very beginning, how to count this song really well. How the beats get divided in this particular song and then how do you access the those subdivisions on your respective instrument right so we'll first get cracking with the rhythm pattern and how do we count it then we look at the bass line the tune following the chord progression then we look at a few more bass guitar specific things like positions finding your way through the instrument and so on and so forth so hope you guys find the lesson useful if you do at the end of the video do leave us a comment and a like and share the video with your musician friends or anyone who'd like to learn the song also so there's a subscribe button somewhere there feel free to go and click it that'd be very helpful there's also a bell icon you can click that for regular notifications whenever we uh, launch a new video and all the notation for this including the bass guitar tablature midi files are waiting for you on patreon along with all the other lessons which are done on the channel which focus on things like music theory ear training composition the bass guitar of course the piano of course and the guitar and a lot of other things will be coming your way. So let's get cracking. So when you count this song, you have to figure out the maximum subdivisions which are used within the beat. So if you say, when the night, two and three and four and one. So if you just hum the melody with the pulse, when the night has come, oh, and the land is dark. So what I'm snapping is the pulse. So when the night, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, right? So it feels as though the beats are getting divided into two or the maximum subdivision, the maximum we go inside our beat is by two. So let's test that out with the bass line. Pom, pom, pa, ba, one, two and three, four and one. And so if your head moves like this, if this is the pulse of the song, then the bass is very much going in subdivisions of two. And the way we count this is by saying one and two and three and four and. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one. So even before I play it, I like to transcribe this music either with sheet music or even in the paper, just, you know, writing down one and two and three and four and, and then superimpose the bass line as you sing with these syllables. So I would go one, and two and three and four and one. So imagine yourself playing it and then you go one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one. You, you realize all the hit points and then you can circle them or tick them or mark them in any which way you want and then that's going to motivate you to play those particular notes which I'm going to share with you of course is exactly on those beats and counting is crucial one and two and three and but I would always uh, recommend you to count while moving your head so that you get an organic natural vibe to this particular song so one two and three four and one and just like people do you could even snap your fingers one and three four usually when we snap we snap at the two and the four so one two, and three four and one two, and three four and one two, and three four and one two and three four so snap at the two and the four count at 
with everything one and two and three and four and and then you get the superimposed beats you could also see my notes which i have handwritten that that should give you an idea and also the tablature and the notation which you can download so coming to the actual hit points so i'll just simplify the process by playing an open a on the a string on those hit points so one and two and three and four and one and two and so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and right and, and three and four and one and two of course this is not the bass line the bass line mm, has all those notes breaking that down one and two and three and four and one and might as well do it with the stand by me articulation of that bass line which is one choke at the one staccato one and the way i choke the notes is i could either use my alternating finger if i'm picking with the index i will mute it with my middle that's a standard way i mute so i get a nice staccato however i could also since it's an open string i can also get a nice sound by choking it with my other fingers you don't want to you don't want to whack it hard or clutch it hard just light enough so that the note chokes itself okay so one will be pam 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 so this is the first thing i'd like you to practice like a staccato legato combo thing Ba ba ba. Forget the ba 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 for now. Ba ba. Staccato, legato. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 ba. Okay, so what was that? Ba ba will be ba ba ba. Notes. So I'm now going to teach you the line in open string position, where pretty much a lot of our notes are as open as possible open means you don't actually press the frets with your left hand or your fretting hand you go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 so at the 4 and we have an e g sharp and then an a let's see how that goes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 remember the first one is staccato 1 and 2 and the end of the two goes on 1 And three and four and four and which is E G sharp E open G sharp on the one two three fourth fret of the E string. So one and two and three and four and that's the fourth fret. That's how you count it. One two three four. So bump and two and three and four and one and and three and four and one. so every four and are basically approach notes or passing notes to go to the next chord root so the chords in this particular song are on the key of a major this entire song is on the key of a major and the chords chosen by the composer are a major so let's play the chord roots at the one and the and of the two and let's see how that sounds one and two and three and four and one and two and with the track in the night has come and two and three and, and and then we go to f sharp minor second fret on the e string and the land is dark and the moon you can play d here on the fifth fret of the a string or you can leave, go to d open which has a nice uh, crunchy sound and the moon is the only light we'll see Okay, so A F sharp D E. You can even go A F sharp D E low E if you wish, or A F sharp. You can even do the high F sharp A F sharp. What is this high F sharp? It's on the D string fourth fret. A F sharp D third chord open quite easy, and then just pick the E or. the lori so you can decide which notes you want but the rhythm i am suggesting before you get into the walking or the passing notes it's nice to just play the chord roots at the 1 and the 2 and a half of the bar the 1 will be staccato the 2 and a half would be legato so let's see how that sounds when the night has come f sharp 
And the land is dark And the moon Is the only Light we'll see Keep going and No, I won't Be afraid oh, oh, oh. No, I won't be afraid Just as long D. As you stand by me Goes on to the chorus Oh, darling Darling, stand by me Oh, oh, oh. stand by me Oh, stand And goes on Stand by me Okay, so that's your bass line pretty much at the one and the two and a half of the bar. Now let's start adding in the flavors which are the connecting notes to each chord. We also call them as passing tones or Passing tones are the moving notes and the landing tones are the chord tones which it resolves to. So A, A, E, G sharp, A. That's the first set of notes. You can see the notation of the tabs. It'll be there. A, A, E, G sharp, A. You could play it like that. E, open. G sharp, fourth fret. A of the A string. Open A. A, A, E, G sharp, A. A, then to approach F sharp A, G sharp, F sharp that's open A G sharp on the 4th fret of the E string F sharp on the 2nd fret of the E string so A, A, E, G sharp A A, A, G sharp, F sharp F sharp, E, F sharp so that's your passing note for F sharp F sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp just a single one there F sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, F sharp, and then da da da. Now you don't have that low D, at least I don't have the option of playing it since the low E is my lowest note. So I can do F sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, F sharp, higher F sharp. To get an octave on the bass, just go up there. Ba ba bum, ba. So F sharp, E, D, 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 F sharp, E. E and then E G sharp A you can play higher or come back to our usual E G sharp A A E G sharp A it's a nice start to play with the open because it'll also test you to not ring your strings it'll help you to play a bit more cleaner so try start with that and I'm obviously going to show you other positions of playing the track so let's do that again with more of an open vibe Now F sharp. La da dum. Ba bum. Now higher. That's higher F sharp. E D D D F sharp E E E G sharp A or E G sharp A E E G sharp A. Let's now try and follow the original or the official bass line by Lloyd Trotman on the double bass. So. What we hear is we are hearing the higher octave note. So it actually kind of starts from... It starts from the octave A. So I'm choosing the high A on the second fret of the G string. Has a nice vibe. And the night has come. And now when you do F sharp, you use your middle there. Index F sharp needs to be played with the pinky. Okay, so ba 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 so bum ba ba da de te te ro ro ba ba. Don't forget the legato staccato toggle or starting staccato then legato. Okay, coming down. I can do my open D, then D F sharp E, E, ba da da. Instead of doing, which I taught you in the uh, open position, the low E. Originally, what the bass player does is is to play it higher, so it stands out more. I'm sure. So whole bass line in the original style, the original octave or pitch registers. sharp minor now D major E major 
A major. Now, we don't have to only play it in the sort of uh, open fret area or just the first few frets. Now, the challenge of playing the bass on the first few frets, since it's a wider instrument compared to the guitar, you're going to need to stretch your fingers a lot more. So even if you're a newcomer to the instrument, I would then recommend finding a position higher, maybe here, this would be a nice starting point, position 2, which is the 7th fret of the uh, D string. So this will make it a lot more easier, I feel, to play uh, because the frets are a bit closer, your hand doesn't stretch out that much. It's a little bit more ergonomic, you could say. But you have to remember your notes and your intervals. So that's what we are going to try and do here. So boom, boom, ba -da -da. Now, before I teach you Stand By Me here, remember the intention is to help you grow as a player. So... I also want you to understand the fretboard a little bit at this particular point of the lesson. So, if this is your A, this is kind of an octave with respect to the original A. So, we are assuming that this is the root and this would be its octave. So, you can remember your notes in the different positions. Position 1. I'm going to leave a major scale tutorial on the bass where I've talked about all the different positions to find the scales, not only major, even the minors and pentatonics. So do check out the description. There'll be a few more lessons you could watch to supplement this. But I'm just going to fast forward and say that this is an octave. This is the root. So you need to know your intervals in each position. So A, B, which is your second, major third, Perfect fourth, perfect fifth, per major sixth, major seventh, octave. So when you take the line, it's the octave, five, seven, octave. Also, you could say sa, sa, pa, ni, sa, 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 ni, pa. So you can adjust your swaras as well as per the notes or what I'm singing are Indian swaras which just show you which interval you're on. Sa is the 1, Pa is the 5, Ni is the 7, Sa, Sa ni da or Sa ni da, Sa ni da, Pa da, Da pa ma or Nu ni da da pa ma. Yeah, you can do all your intervals here based on your knowledge of the scale. So let's just do the original bass line now, but from up the seventh fret. So come down to get the fifth. Now I'm playing the major sixth here. You could also do if you started with your ring end here with a pinky. So if you're on this shape, you'll be playing the F sharp or the major 6 down here. But if you're here, then you have to play the major 6th with the pinky above on the A string. Now coming to that D. Da 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 or da 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 da. So I'm going with this position for now. Bum bum bedroom ba do. And then da 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 when the night has come, oh, and the land is dark,
right guys so hopefully now you know different positions different shapes to play the song in uh, check out the tabs all the three positions are notated for you with notation in the bass clef as well as tabs uh, and hopefully you guys have figured out how to count it as well we'll be doing a lot more bass guitar tutorials on all these great bass lines where the intention is to take the bass line dissect it transcribe it figure out why they played this stuff like in this entire bass line you realize that there are chord tones pom 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 and there are passing notes da da rum pa da rum pa da rum pa da rum right so that's a very important component in composing a bass line you have the chord roots which are used and you have the walking notes or the passing notes or the approach tones which are going to the landing tones which are nothing but chord tones right guys so hopefully you found the lesson useful if you did do consider leaving if you did do consider leaving a comment with what you thought about the lesson do consider giving us a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe and there's a bell waiting for you to click right away do that now thanks a ton see you soon